Ok. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por vuestra asistencia. Eh, bienvenidos a la segunda edición de Kaggle Days Meetup en Madrid. Eh, tras la primera, que fue un, un éxito con José Antonio Guerrero. Hoy eh, tenemos otro gran máster, a, a Pebel Jankivik. Eh, lo primero, dar las gracias a, a los sponsors, pues gracias a ellos eh, esto es posible. Tanto traer a los buenos ponentes como las pizzas y cervezas que nos podremos tomar después. Eh, dar también las gracias a Google Campus que nos cede estas instalaciones y dar también las gracias a, a Kaggle y a Logic AI que hacen posible que eh, estos eventos a nivel internacional y en, y en este caso eh, este de Madrid. Y sin más, eh, os presento a, a, a Pavel. Eh, Pavel es eh, economista, tiene un background en finanzas y en la banca, pero desde hace siete años eh, cambió al mundo del data science, donde eh, empezó a participar en Kaggle, ganando seis competiciones eh, y ganando hasta 150.000 euros en premios. Eh, Pavel no solo es gran maestro, sino que también es cofundador de Logic AI y también eh, es muy conocido por una competición que ganó el año pasado que se llama Mercari. Y hoy nos va a contar dos, eh, va a hacer dos ponencias. Una primera que es cómo preparar los datos eh, en, en, en problemas eh, basados en el tiempo, tanto cómo hacer la validación como preparar los datos. Y luego hará una segunda ponencia donde nos contará sobre esa competición eh, Mercari. Eh, sin más, le doy la palabra a Pavel. Thank you, Pavel. Okay. Okay. Ah. Sorry. Can we open the presentation? So, in, in the meantime, <laughs> I can uh, just introduce myself again. I understood maybe 50% of what <laughs> Javier said, um, so I, I'll try to uh, elaborate on this. I started, uh, as, uh, my professional career started in banks. So I worked in banks uh, for more than five years, and then I started uh, learning uh, Python and data science things about seven years ago. I don't know how many you If you remember uh, the first uh, machine learning class uh, organized by Andrew Ink, it was uh, not even uh, called Coursera at the time, right? Do you remember? Just raise your hand if you remember. Okay, <laughs> nice. So I think this course um, has, has, has begun a lot of uh, data science careers because I observed on the Kaggle forums that people referred to this course as the first thing they did in machine learning. And uh, the Kaggle was the second thing for me. So after writing uh, SQL queries in the bank for eight hours a day, <laughs> I decided to switch uh, and to do uh, competitions. And I think it was uh, my second competition when I realized that I can, good, uh, can get quite good at this because I took uh, fourth place uh, up from uh, about 300 people. So then it was like a switch for me. So I thought, okay, if I can put uh, enough time into the competition, I think I can win. And uh, throughout uh, my Kaggle competitions, I tried to, you know, I took part in more than 20 competitions, and I uh, won money in six of them, and it's about, I know, $150,000, uh, all, um, all of them. So I think uh, if it comes to money winnings, I'm more or less in the top 10, I think. So. <laughs> Because there are three ty types of people that are, that, uh, are Kagglers. The first type is uh, people who want to learn. The second type is people who want uh, to earn some uh, good entry in their uh, resume. And the third type is they do it for money. <laughs> And I'm, I think I was, uh, at the beginning, I, I was uh, in the uh, third group. I did it for the money. It may be, it sounds strange, but uh, you can do uh, very go good things for bad reasons. So I think, <laughs> so I think it's, it's the case, uh, in my case, I did uh, learn a lot because the incentive was there. I, I wanted to earn money on Kaggle. 
and uh, I had some success, <laughs> as you can see. Um, a year ago, after working in two data scientist jobs in Warsaw startups, I decided to uh, co-found my own company, Logic AI, together with Maria Parish, who is not here, and uh, she, she says sorry for this. And um, it was one year ago, almost exactly one year ago, February 2018. And we started uh, very strong because on uh, April we organized uh, Kaggle Days in Warsaw, which was the first uh, uh, offline event for Kagglers. And it was very unique because uh, people who didn't see each other at all on, on Kaggle um, had the chance to fi finally meet each other. Like, for example, I don't know if you recognize Carol Squertas, Nissan uh, GTR. <laughs> right? You know this guy with uh, dark glasses? Yeah, we met him. <laughs> He's a nice guy. And uh, there are more people like him, and uh, it's very, uh, very nice uh, that, uh, that we can do, do this. Uh, last month, I mean, w w one month ago, we organized the second conference in Paris. And this time, it was uh, very good, because uh, Anthony Goldblum uh, visited us. And he said that this event was a hi highlight of his professional career, because the energy was so good at the event, that he said that uh, people need such events, uh, I mean Kaggle, Kaggle community. And uh, surprise, surprise, he decided that uh, in uh, April we will have another Kaggle Days in San Francisco. Uh, and even uh, two weeks after this in Dubai. So I think uh, he understood that it's very important to bring together the community and um, to kind of focus on this. And also, uh, like conferences is not enough. We need also meetups like this, so people from local communities can uh, bring to, uh, together the experiences from their uh, their Kaggle uh, journey, and uh, um, I mean, hopefully, we'll all learn from this also. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get back to the topic. Uh, which is time-based uh, model validation. And I decided it's, it's the first time I do uh, this presentation. It's the first time, but I think this is a very important topic and uh, very hard to do right. Because uh, the point of this uh, local validation is to uh, mimic how the real life, uh, how the models will act in real life, right? So whether you should trust your model or not, this is the uh, question you should ask the model. And uh, also, there are a couple of Kaggle competitions which we'll look at that had this problem, and uh, I think um, there, it, there's the solutions uh, are quite good. Okay, so one thing you can do is scaffold cross validation, but it's not the way for time-based uh, models. You should uh, split the data so it re reminds uh, how the real life is uh, happening. So it should be probably time-based splits. And uh, of course, if you do it wrong, there is a huge risk of leakage. I mean, uh, if, uh, if you achieve like 100% accuracy, that means uh, you have uh, a leak in your training data. Okay, th the first um, problem that I will talk about is the visitor, number of visitors in restaurants competition. I didn't take part in this competition, but uh, I remember the solution from Daniel Kivaranovich, who was on the previous Kaggle days in Warsaw, and his solution was very elegant for me. Because um, he took the fifth place, and I, I don't know, he invested like three, two or three weeks in this competition. So he, his uh, solution was really very elegant for me, and I decided that I want to show uh, what he did. So the goal of this competition was to predict the number of visitors in restaurants for over 30 days. It was 39 days, but it's not important. And again, regular k fault won't work. And what he did was, is the simplest thing you can uh, think of, I think. This is to create 39 models for each of the day, right, in the future. So, but if you create uh, such models uh, like he, him, then you have a problem uh, how to engineer the futures. Because uh, you must not leak the data, uh, you must not use the features that uh, reflect how the future is uh, uh, when, when the future happens. So, for example, when he created this model for the first day, he could only use the data from yesterday, right? And, uh, and back uh, from yesterday. 
when he created model for the second day, he must omit the day before yesterday, and so on and so on. So it's very important to just understand what is happening behind the scenes so you can, you can build such models yourselves. And this uh, graph continues and it's like 39 days and it's very uh, easy to get, get it wrong if you're not careful enough. And the second uh, competition that uh, was mine comp my competition, um, it was almost six, I, it was six years ago, we took uh, second place in this competition. It was the biggest competition on Kaggle yet, I think. I, I mean, I, I told you that I was uh, focused on the money, so if uh, there was like a money pool of this size, I was encouraged to do this competition. Uh, so we took uh, the second place and we were only, like I calculated this, it's about five, uh, 30 seconds of differences. Like w when you uh, convert it to uh, airplane delays. So it's very, very little difference between us and the uh, first team. And I was, uh, I go back to this competition very often because uh, it reminds me uh, of this problem again and again. Here, the problem was to predict when the airplane will land after you uh, st freeze the time and ask all the airplanes uh, in, the air, in the air, right? So imagine that uh, you freeze the time and you ask, okay, this plane will uh, arrive at the airport at this and this hour. So this was hard because organizers did, didn't provide uh, one table with data, but they did provide about 20 tables with data. So, um, Again, if you remember uh, from what I came from, it was SQL queries that I wrote all day. And in this competition, I thought this, this was my very strong point because uh, I could write SQL queries to uh, get good in this competition. And I was uh, really happy because the strategy I uh, did in this competition was to crea create artificial data points in this competition. So imagine that you have a flight and it's like two hour flight. And then you cut the, this flight into 15 minutes chunks. And you create features so they reflect what happens before uh, this uh, chunk in, of time. And uh, I was happy because this, uh, I thought about this at, the at first. And then I continued uh, throughout the competition without changing anything in the strategy. So all, all together it was, uh, um, like I say, create artificial cut of times for each flight and gen generate features for them. And the hard point, point was that I did it in SQL. So I had to build like about, uh, tw I think, 20 or 30 scripts uh, in SQL to kind of create those uh, features. But at the end, it turned out to be okay. Okay, so the toolbox. The toolbox is really important because uh, how should you create such features? I think, uh, you can build your own, but it's very, very hard to build a good solution uh, and, to, and so that the solution is very precise. Uh, I mean, the most likely scenario is that you'll uh, make something wrong because I did it on my own and it's, it's very, very hard. And th there are two approaches uh, to build uh, such models. One is uh, to, I mean, I probably if you want to predict future, you use something like discrete time windows, right? You, you take like last 90 days and you predict the next 30 days. And you move uh, like a sliding box over the time window. So every time you move the window, you also change the uh, time window you predict. And it's, uh, it's okay. An another thing you can do is to treat this as a continuous problem. So use something like a time to event model. So you're not interested in uh, the box itself. You just ask the model when the transaction will happen. And it's very interesting because uh, many problems you can reverse. For example, if you want to predict the churn of the customer, actually you don't, wa you don't want to predict the churn, but you want to predict when the next activity will be. Right? So just by re reversing the question, you can ga gain a lot of uh, insight in the, in the data itself. And this is actually what I've been doing uh, for the last year. So I, I created a lot of uh, these time to event models. Okay, so about the tools, uh, there is, I don't know if you know this uh, library, R raise your hand if you know this. Okay, this is a very handy library for time-based uh, models because it generates features for, for you, right? You just uh, 
place the right tables in the right places, uh, say to, the, to this tool, this is my time column, and it will automatically split uh, all the uh, features so that they don't leak the data in the future. So it's, it's a very nice tool. I, I encourage you to try it on your own, on your own problems. And there is a nice uh, also addition to this uh, tool because it create, uh, creates automatically f features for you. It has some kind of generic algorithm to create uh, the features that uh, are the most important for your problem. Another thing uh, I refer here to uh, a very interesting approach. Uh, you, can, you can check this uh, WTTT RNN models. It's a way to use uh, a neural network uh, for this problem. So you use a um, neural network to predict th the time to event, and you use a very specific distribution. It's called variable distribution. And what you can do is uh, also um, very, very interesting because uh, you, you are not interested in the specific time, I mean, point in time, but you predict kind of a distribution uh, of, of the events. So not only you, you gain the insights into when something happens, but you gain also insights into how uh, probable the event is. So it's very elegant uh, also solution. And I think you'll get all the slides after the meetup so you can uh, check this um, uh, tool on your own. Yeah, so this, these are uh, two examples of how you create sliding box model. It's, it's a very uh, standard thing to do. You just move the uh, sliding uh, the, the box uh, into the future and create uh, features based on this box. And the second thing, uh, the second model, uh, as I s have told you, creates not only uh, one prediction, but it kind of a distribution over what happens. So I think this is a very good, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a data scientist and you present your results, it's much better to present, uh, present a curve like this, right? Because you can gain um, a lot more insight into what the customer uh, behavior than just saying, okay, this customer will buy in one week. Do, and this is like uh, an extension of this. Okay, these are the references I, uh, I use for this presentation. Uh, okay, so any questions about this? Because this is the first presentation. The second one will be about the uh, Mercari competition. <laughs> Alguien que se anime a hacer una pregunta sobre problemas de series temporales. Mientras lo pensáis, recordaros una cosilla. Si queréis descargaros la aplicación Kahoot en el móvil, porque tenemos al final un mini concurso, eh, el que quiera participar. Se llama K-A-H-O-O-T, Kahoot. Pues si no tenéis ninguna ninguna pregunta. So, hello, this is Alberto from from Teradata. I have worked previously on time series based models. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like your approaches in terms of uh, trying to break down uh, the problem in, into, into bits, into pieces. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I have seen that works a lot, uh, for example, you were saying about predicting 39 uh, different mm -hmm. models. So what I have seen is, for example, trying to combine the mm -hmm. advantages yes. of the time series models or the Arima classics, plus trying to predict the, the, the deviation on top of it with some kind of um, uh, regression models that kind of correct the, the, the disadvantages of trying to predict some long term, because it's, it's very good for predicting the first two, three days, mm -hmm. but very bad when you go and try to predict the, the 39th. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can tell us about some, expand on 
more creative approaches uh, uh, with, with time series. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I try always to, to overcome this, the, the disadvantages of, of the projects with uh, some creative solutions. So it was interesting to hear about yours. I don't know if you can comment others. I, th I think that uh, one of the like, revelations I had uh, f about two years ago was to use uh, the distributions of uh, uh, to predict the events, right? So you don't want to predict uh, one, uh, you don't want to get one prediction which you don't know anything about, but you want to create a distribution over the predictions. So you can say uh, how sure the model is about the predictions and also how, what is, uh, you can compare the customers with this approach. I don't, I don't know if you, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is the right answer for you. But, but uh, I, I think if you, um, what you can check out this WTT RNN blog post. It's a blog post written about uh, three years ago uh, by a Swedish guy, uh, I think called Egil. And he, I mean, if you read this uh, blog post, you will get this kind of maybe revelation on your own because uh, it's a very interesting approach and uh, it's worth trying in, in your own problems. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Tenemos un descanso de cinco minutos si queréis coger una cerveza que hay arriba y preparamos la segunda. Hola a todos. Bueno, pues ahora vamos a continuar con Fernando, que nos va a contar cómo fue Kaggle Days París. Muy bien. Bueno, mientras os sentáis, eh, comentaros, no sé si lo hemos dicho alguna vez, pero los tres organizadores estos que comparten un apellido, eh, Javier, Virilo y, y yo, que soy Fernando, somos primos, por si tenéis la curiosidad. Y, y bueno, fanáticos de Kaggle desde el principio, llegamos a ser... Kaggle Master relativamente pronto. No somos Grand Master como Pavel, solo somos Master, pero eh, muy fanáticos de Kaggle y entonces solemos ir a, como se ha explicado ya varias veces, hay dos eventos que son Kaggle Days y Kaggle Days Meetups. Kaggle Days Meetups es en el que estáis, hay otro en Bruselas, en Milán, en muchos sitios y Kaggle Days son organizados, coorganizados por Logic AI y, y por Kaggle. Entonces Kaggle Days el evento internacional ha habido dos hasta la fecha, eh, uno en Varsovia y otro en París. En ambos estuvimos nosotros y os comento brevemente la experiencia en, en, en el Kaggle Days de París, sobre todo con vistas a que os animéis a próximas ediciones porque está, está muy chulo el Kaggle Days Meetup que organizamos nosotros, pero este, este Kaggle Days la verdad está muy bien, son dos días del de, de, evento. En este caso, en París, fue en una estación, en, en París tienen una estación, que no recuerdo ahora mismo eh, el nombre, es eh, un centro tecnológico con startups, es eh, el número, de, número uno en Europa de algo, no sé si en, en número de valoración de startups o algo así, eh, muy chulo, y ahí fue donde eh, tuvo lugar el, el evento de Kaggle Days París. Este es el programa del primer día, el primer día eran charlas sobre todo, había una serie de eventos también, y el segundo día era una competición, como una competición de Kaggle, pero eh, una especie de datatón de, de 12 horas. Eh, pues este es eh, bueno, el lugar del evento. Eh, los patrocinadores eran un grupo de marcas de Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, etc. Así que había eh, también un toque de glamour inusual en este tipo de, de eventos. Eh, entre los asistentes pues estaban Cracks, no sé si conocéis a Sirac, eh, eh, muy conocido en el mundo de, de youtubers de Machine Learning, eh, un tío muy simpático. Eh, este es Anthony Godblum, el CEO de, de Kaggle, el dueño que lo, lo vendió a, a Google. Eh, aquí está Pavel. Eh, también traigo la foto de Anokas. Anokas es un gran master. Eh, que la, me hace gracia porque estuvimos con él, la gente le preguntaba, bueno, ¿y tú qué has estudiado y tal? Como pensando que era... Y el chico tiene 17 años. Fue Grand Master, creo que con 15 o 16, no me acuerdo. Uh, 15, uh, Pablo. 
Peter, but he was grandmaster with 15, 16 or something like that. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, y, y bueno, y estaba ahí como, como mentor, ayudando a la gente a, a bueno, en la, el día de la competición. Y es un tío súper simpático y, y también tiene, es mitad eh, polaco y mitad eh, español. Estos son algunos de los presentadores, Alberto Danese, Semenov, antiguo número uno del mundo, CPMP, eh, Constantín y muchos más. No sé si aquí salen eh, algunos de los, de los speakers que estuvieron, eh, Radar, eh, bueno, para los que sois más frikis como nosotros, pues esto era como ver, no sé, como ver a, a Messi, al que le gusta el fútbol. Eh, el primer día, aparte de, de las charlas, digamos, había una parte más interactiva que era el brainstorming. Estaba muy bien porque hacías networking eh, y aquí estábamos eh, haciendo grupo de cinco. Eh, y nosotros tuvimos la, la oportunidad de ganar esta mini competición. No ganamos la competición de, del sábado, la, la importante, digamos, pero había tres mini competiciones y tuvimos la oportunidad de ganar una de ellas y, y gané un pañuelo de Christian Dior, que no sé todavía qué hacer con él, pero es bueno, muy chulo. Uh, bueno, ahí está Javier. Um, y después el segundo día fue la competición, uh, que como os decía, pues empezaba a las ocho y media y acababa a, a las eh, cerca de las ocho. Eh, muy intensa, bueno, como cualquier datatón que se haga, súper inten intenso. En este caso, uh, era una competición muy chula en la que teníamos, eh, podíamos hacer NLP, podíamos hacer tratamiento de imagen, eh, podíamos, teníamos datos estructurados. Eh, alguno hasta se complicó la vida scrapeando webs. Eh, estuvo muy, muy chula, la verdad. Este es el sitio donde, en la misma estación donde estábamos nosotros con todos los equipos. Eh, este era un grupo de españoles que creo que algunos estáis por ahí. Eh, y bueno, y, lo, y, los, y los que ganaron, eh, ganaron dos chicos argelinos eh, con una solución... Como a veces pasa, no era súper compleja, a veces nos empeñamos a hacer cosas súper complejas y hacer overfitting, a mí me pareció una solución muy fina y no me da tiempo a explicarla, pero me pareció muy, muy interesante. Y estos fueron to todos los que estuvimos ahí. Eh, después nos fuimos a, a, a una fiesta, eh, no tenemos fotos de, de la fiesta, pero, pero estuvo muy bien la fiesta. Y nada, y simplemente, sobre todo para, para animaros, para que os... Eh, los próximos son un poco complicados para los españoles de ir, San Francisco y Dubái, esas son las fechas, pero me, comenta, me han comentado por aquí que muy pronto vamos a tener otros en Europa, donde será más fácil para todos ir. Pues nada, muchas gracias, solo esto.